family students. Um, our topic is uh, modulation techniques, and in this modulation technique, we will focus on the frequency modulation. Let's have a look uh, back on uh, transmission techniques. We have two type of transmission that is base band, base band transmission and modulation techniques. Uh, if you look on uh, base band transmissions, we say electrical equivalent of original information is known as the base band signal. The communication system in which the base band signals are transmitted directly is known as base band transmission. Basement transmission is effective only for wired communication. For example, telephone networks, data communication in computer networks, for phones and cable, but it is inefficient for wireless or radio communication. And there are some limitations of baseband signals in uh, this transmission in communication system, which is uh, basement signals having small frequency range from 20 Hz to 20 kHz only. So there is no large um, channel accommodation, mixing of signals. Okay. Number two, due to small frequency range, baseband signals cannot travel long distances in free space or air. Number third, after a travel of short distance, signal gets suppressed. So not they are not used for radio communication or wireless communication. To make the baseband signal efficient for radio communication, modulation techniques are used. So let's have a look on modulation technique. To overcome the drawback of baseband transmission and transmit baseband signals by radio modulation techniques, radio modulation techniques are used. The baseband signals is a low frequency signal and cannot travel a longer distance, just like we cannot walk at the longer distances. Okay. So modulation techniques, uh, modulation is a process of superimposing low frequency information signal on a high frequency carrier signal कि हम क्या करते हैं कि हम एक superimpose कर देते हैं एक low frequency के information signal को with a high frequency carrier signal और उसको हम transmit करवा देते हैं तो this technique is called modulation technique there are three types of modulation techniques number one is amplitude modulation and another one is angle modulation. We have already discussed amplitude modulation in our previous video, and now we will discuss about angle modulation. There are two types of angle modulation: frequency modulation and phase modulation. आप देख सकते हैं कि आप देख सकते हैं कि मॉड्यूलेटिंग सिग्नल कोई भी ऐसा सिग्नल जो कि कोई डेटा सिग्नल या इनफॉरमेशन है किसी सिग्नल में हम क्या करते हैं हम उसको एक हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी सिग्नल के साथ अटैच कर देते हैं एंड देन वी मेक अ कंबिनेशन ऑफ दैट सिग्नल एंड देन ट्रांसमिट व्हाई डू वी यूज नीड ऑफ मॉड्यूलेशन Baseband signal transmission cannot be used for radio communication. To transmit the baseband signal for radio communication, modulation must be used. Modulation के कुछ advantages भी हैं. Modulation क्यों use होती है? Reduction in height of antenna, avoid mixing of signals, increase the range of communication, and multiplexing is possible in in modulation. Improves quality of reception. जैसा सिग्नल आप ट्रांसमिट करोगे वैसे ही आपको इंफॉर्मेशन इंफॉर्मेटिव सिग्नल आपको रिसीवर एंड पे रिसीव होगा टाइप्स ऑफ ए एफ एफ एम एंड डेफिनेशन एंड वे फॉर्म आर डिफाइंड इन दिस स्लाइड सो यू कैन हैव लुक ऑन ऑल काइंड ऑफ सिग्नल विद देयर डायग्राम सो लेट्स कम बैक टूवर्ड्स एंगल मोटिलेशन Angle modulation have two types: frequency modulation, which we call FM modulation, and phase modulation, which we call EM modulation. What is frequency modulation? Frequency modulation is a technique of modulation in which the frequency of carrier is varied in accordance accordance with the amplitude of modulating signal. 
इन एफ एम ऑडिलेशन एम्पलीट्यूड एंड फेज रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट कि जी आपके जो सिग्नल का एम्पलीट्यूड होता है और फेज जो होता है वो कॉन्स्टेंट होते हैं सो so, इसकी वजह से इन्फॉर्मेशन जो होती है वो फ्रिक्वेंसी की वजह से चेंज होती है दैट मीन्स द सिग्नल्स का जो एम्पलीट्यूड और फेज कॉन्स्टेंट रहेगा और आपकी फ्रिक्वेंसी सिग्नल की चेंज होती रहेगी इफ़ यू फोकस ऑन दीज डाइग्राम यू कैन से एक ऐसा सिग्नल है हमारे पास इन डाइग्राम ए वी हैव विच इज विच इज मॉडुलेटिंग सिग्नल दूसरा हमारे पास है जी कैरियर सिग्नल विच हैज़ वेरी हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी सिग्नल और हम उन दोनों सिग्नल्स को कंबाइन करने से हमारे पास एक मॉडुलेटिंग सिग्नल आता है जिस जी जो कि अपनी फ्रिक्वेंसी मैक्सिमम और मिनिमम की तरफ लेके जाता है डिपेंडिंग ऑन द इन्फॉर्मेशन मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स इज डिफाइंड एज द रेशियो ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी डेविएशन टू द मॉडुलेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स इज इक्वल्स टू द फ्रीक्वेंसी डेविएशन डिवाइडेड बाय मॉडुलेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी इन फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडुलेशन मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स शुड बी ग्रेटर देन वन मॉडुलेटिंग मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स इन फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडुलेशन करता क्या है कि वो बैंडविड ऑफ द एफ एम वेव को डिसाइड करता है नंबर ऑफ साइड बैंड इन एफ एफ एम वेव को डिसाइड करता है डेविएशन रेशो द मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स कोरिस्पॉन्डिंग टू मैक्सिमम डेविएशन एंड मैक्सिमम मॉडुलेशन मॉडुलेटिंग फ्रिक्वेंसी इज कॉल्ड डेविएशन रेशो तो जितना भी मैक्सिमम डेविएशन होगा उसको डिवाइड करेंगे मैक्सिमम मॉडुलेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी तो वे विल गेट डेविएशन रेशो इन फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडुलेशन ब्रॉडकास्टिंग द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ द डेविएशन इज लिमिटेड टू सेवेंटी फाइव किलो हर्ट्स एंड द मैक्सिमम मॉडुलेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी इज ऑल्सो लिमिटेड टू फिफ्टीन किलो हर्ट्स परसेंटेज ऑफ मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडुलेशन The percentage percentage modulation is defined as the ratio of the actual frequency deviation produced by the modulating signal to the maximum allowable frequency deviation. This is our first percentage of the modulation index. It will be equal to actual deviation, which will be our, or divided by the maximum allowable deviation. Deviation. Carrier signal, which is may be represented as. Uh, E C is equals to E C sine of omega C T plus phi, where E C हमारे पास क्या instantaneous uh, amplitude, omega C is angular velocity which is two pi F C, F C is equals to carrier frequency and phi is a phase angle. Frequency modulation wave. You can see a figure in this slide which shows the frequency versus time in frequency modulation. Frequency modulation is nothing but a deviation of frequency. Yeah, the frequency change will be deviate only. So it is seen that instantaneous frequency f of the frequency modulation wave is given by f is equal to f c one plus k e m cos of omega m t. Where f c is equals to unmodulated frequency carrier frequency, k mm -hmm. is the proportional proportionality constant. So e m cos of omega m t is equals to instantaneous modulating signal. Cosine term preferred for simplicity. Otherwise, we can use sine term as as well. So, in this scenario, uh, the maximum deviation for this particular signal will occur when cos omega m t is equals to plus minus one, which is which will be maximum. So equation um, will become as f is equals to f c one plus k e m. And f is equals to f c plus minus k e m f c. So if we take the generalized form, we get the maximum deviation lambda will be given by. So we put so all the values we put in in this. So we see that we have in the end we have this mathematical uh, equations. I will get frequency. We can find out. Uh, angle as well okay so in the end 
the E of FM is equals to A sine of omega CT plus MF sine of omega MT and this is the equation of frequency modulation so in this if with this equation we can find out frequency modulation of any signal right so frequency spectrum of uh, frequency modulation frequency spectrum is a graph of amplitude versus frequency jab bhi aap kisi amplitude aur frequency ka graph draw karte hain so this will be called the frequency spectrum of fm modulation the frequency spectrum of fm wave tells us about number of side bands present in the fm wave and their amplitudes the expression for fm wave is not simple it is complex because it is sine of sine function so only solution is to be is to use bessel's function if you remember bessel's function we can apply on this and we will have a final equation so there are four equations are given by and so on from this equation it is it is seen that the fm wave consists of carrier which is first term in equation and infinite number of side bands all terms except first terms are side bands the amplitude of uh, carrier and side bands depend on j coefficient so in place of omega c and omega m we can use f c and f m so if you look at the id of the spectrum of this signal which is uh, shown in in this figure this is ideal frequency spectrum of f m if you look at that this uh, the bandwidth of the signal is infinity and if you look at the uh, the lower side bands and the upper side bands it shows the amplitude and the frequency spectrum and the value will be here so the the, the signal will show the frequency um, values as well bandwidth of frequency modulation from the frequency mod spectrum of fm wave shown in figure we can say that the bandwidth of fm wave is infinite but practically it is calculated based on how many side bands have significant amplitudes a simple method to calculate the bandwidth is bw is equals to 2 fm into number of significant side bands with increase in modulation index the number of significant side band bands increases so that the bandwidth also increases number 2 is the second method to calculate bandwidth is by carson's rule so what is carson's rule it states that the bandwidth of fm wave is twice the sum of deviation and the highest modulating frequency so if we apply this formula we can find out the bandwidth of the signal as well so highest order side band is equals to to be found from table 2.1 after the modulation of modulation index m where m is equals to m over fm so you can find out yes so from the table the modulation index 4 highest order side band is 7 therefore the the bandwidth is will be equals to 70 kilohertz तो so, अगर हम लोगों को एवोल्यूशन इंडेक्स की वैल्यू पता हो और हमारे पास हाउ मेनी हाईएस्ट ऑर्डर ऑफ साइड बैंड्स गिवन हो तो हम उसकी बैंडविड फाइंड आउट कर सकते हैं सो इफ यू लुक इन दिस टेबल वी कैन सी द कैरियर साइड बैंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चार्ट फॉर डिफरेंट मॉडुलेशन हमारे पास मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स डिफरेंट है एंड वी विल हैव डिफरेंट साइड फ्रिक्वेंसीज सो वी कैन फाइंड आउट the band uh, side band distribution band with the so effect of modulation index on side bands modulation index so in this uh, diagram different diagram you can see ke modulation index ka kya asar hota on different side bands there are different side bands hai so and we have this uh, modulation index what will be the spectrum of the signals So there are some examples. The next uh, topic is uh, frequency modulation. Key types. There are two types, which is narrow band frequency modulation and wide band frequency modulation. We call NBFM. 
एंड वी कॉल डब्ल्यू बी एफ एम सो नैरो बैंड फ्रिक्वेंसी मॉडलेशन उस टाइम होती है वन मॉडलेशन इंडेक्स इज स्मॉल और जब मॉडलेशन इंडेक्स इन फ्रिक्वेंसी मॉडलेशन इज वेरी लार्ज दैन वी कॉल इट वाइड बैंड फ्रिक्वेंसी मॉडलेशन So in this table we have the comparison between narrow band and wide band frequency modulation. If you look at number one serial number one modulation index in uh, narrow band frequency modulation is less than or slightly greater than one, or in wide band frequency modulation it is always greater than one. So with this same as maximum deviation in M N B F M it's low and W B F M is very high. Range of modulation, modulation uh, frequency in NBFM is very low, and in WBFM it's high. And mod maximum modulation index in NBFM is uh, slightly greater than one, but in WBFM it would be up to twenty-five hundred. Similarly, the bandwidth, small approximately, approximately same as that of AM amplitude modulation, like bandwidth is equal to two FM, but in large about in 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 WBFM it is large about fifteen times greater than that of NBFM. We have the applications uh, in FM mobile communication like police wireless, ambulance, short range, ship to shore communication, etc. comes in F NBFM, and if we talk about WBFM, we have entertainment broadcasting. And that can be used to have for high quality music and transmission. So, if we want to represent the frequency modulation modulated wave, we can represent by two ways. Number one is time domain, and number two is frequency domain. क्या आप इन दोनों को time domain में भी represent कर सकते हो और frequency domain में भी represent कर सकते हो. The time domain Representation means continuous variation of voltage and represent to time as shown in figure one. कि जब आप बोले continuous signal है जो कि generate हो रहा है. Um, and the number two is frequency modulation in frequency domain. Frequency domain is known as the frequency spectrum. इसमें हम लोग graph और और plot of amplitude versus frequency as shown in figure number two. If you see. There are two more um, additional topics, which is pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. So pre and de-emphasis uh, circuits are used only in frequency modulation. Pre-emphasis is used at a transmitter and de-emphasis at a receiver. So what happens? Let's discuss this. Discuss it. In frequency modulation, the noise has a greater effect on the higher modulating frequencies. This effect can be reduced by increasing the value of modulation index for higher modulating frequencies, and this can be done by increasing the deviation and ratio, and can be uh, incre and uh, increasing deviation ratio and deviation ratio can be increased by increasing the amplitude of the modulating signal at the higher frequencies. The artificial uh, boosting of high higher audio modulating frequencies in according accordance with the pre-arranged response curve is called pre-emphasis. Or pre-emphasis circuit, which is actually a high-pass filter. So this is a pre-emphasis circuit, which is if you look at it, it is shown it is a high-pass filter. So as shown in the figure, AF is passed passed through a high pass filter before applying to FM modulator. As modulating frequency increases, capacitive reactance decreases and modulating voltage goes on increasing. So FM is directly proportional to uh, voltage of modulating signal applied to mod FM modulation. Um, bo uh, boosting is done according to pre-arranged curve as shown in the figure two. So this figure is 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 called pre-emphasis curve. 
The time constant of pre-emphasis is at 50 microseconds in all CCIR standards. In system employing American FM and TV standards, networking have time constant of 75 microseconds which is, are used. The pre-emphasis is used as the FM transmitter as shown in the figure. This is the block diagram of FM transmitter with pre-emphasis. De-emphasis circuit is used as FM receiver. Let's talk about the definition. The artificial boosting of higher modulating frequencies in process of pre-emphasis is nullified at receiver by process called de-emphasis. If you look at the uh, circuit of de-emphasis, it will show you the low pass filter. And the figure 5 shows the de-emphasis curve which is actually a demodulated M FM is applied to the de-emphasis circuit which is low pass circuit with, where with increase in FM capacitive reactance XC decreases so our, that output of de-emphasis circuit is also reduced so this curve shows the de-emphasis curve corresponding to a time constant 50 microsecond a 50 microsecond de-emphasis corresponds to a frequency response curve that is 3 dB down at frequency given by this the de-emphasis circuit in FM receiver is shown in this figure. So there uh, are some comparison between pre-emphasis and de-emphasis which is given in this figure. You can see and you can find out uh, we have uh, different parameters which are different with, with our, which are uh, which have a comparison between pre-emphasis and de-emphasis circuits uh, kind of circuit used circuit diagrams. Uh, response curve, time constant, definition and used as either an FM transmitter or FM receiver. So if you have any question you can ask or comment in the comment section below.